As the White House announced yesterday, the President has called on us to expand our existing support to the DHS border security mission now. On the national defense strategy, since its release, the Secretary has been focused on implementing the NDS and driving the Department to align our resources to the strategy. The NDS informs how the Department will prioritize its funding through FY 2020. The Secretary is committed to ensuring the good stewardship of our resources, but we cannot do that alone. Industry plays a critical role ensuring the strength of our force and the health of the industrial base. This afternoon, the Secretary will meet with senior executives from a range of companies to discuss the NDS, exchange ideas, and promote the long-term viability and competitiveness of the nation's industrial base. This is a part of a series of conversations senior leaders will have with industry academia, and local communities about the NDS and how the department is aligning our resources with our priorities. The NDS is our strategy, but, de but to successfully implement it, we must adopt a competitive mindset. With this mindset, we can optimize our relationships with industry and cultivate a culture of performance. Switching gears, I know you have questions about border security. First and foremost, Secretary Mattis agrees with Secretary Nielsen that border security is national security. Secretary Mattis and Secretary Nielsen are working closely together to meet the President's goal to enhance border security. It's important to note that DOD already supports the DHS border security mission with significant efforts from SOUTHCOM, NORTHCOM, PACOM, the National Guard, and the Army Corps of Engineers. For example, in fiscal year 2017, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers received $341 million from Custom and Border Protection to repair, replace, and construct border fence, including 40 miles of fence in San Diego, El Centro, and El Paso sectors. NORTHCOM and Joint Task Force North assisted in the seizure of eight tons of marijuana and Joint Interagency Task Force South assisted in preventing more than 280 tons of cocaine from illegally entering the United States. Additionally, the National Guard in state status provides counter drug activities and executes training in, in the four southwest border states in support of U.S. Border Patrol deterrence operations. Our support to DHS also includes the use of DOD equipment and facilities, as well as training. As the White House announced yesterday, the President has called on us to expand our existing support to the DHS border security mission now. The President has authorized the National Guard, with the effect affected governor's approval, to enhance its support to CBP along the border. The National Guard's efforts will include aviation, engineering, surveillance, communications, vehicle maintenance, and logistical support. 
These National Guard members will act in support of Border Patrol agents who are performing law enforcement duties. We will focus on supporting CBP's priorities, which will determine the time frame and number of military personnel employed. Effective immediately, we are establishing a new border security support cell led by Ken Rapuano, Assistant Secretary for Defense for Homeland Defense and Global Security. This is a 24-7 cell comprised of several DOD representatives who will serve as the single conduit for information and coordination between DOD and DHS. This is not business as usual. The cell will last for the foreseeable future to ensure we surge our capacity to meet the President's enhanced border security goals. Between the existing border security support we provide to DHS and the expanded support I just outlined, DOD will continue to have an important role in securing our nation's border. We look forward to continuing our partnership with DHS to ensure the defense of our nation and the security of the American people. With that, I will take your questions. Bob. Uh, Dana, on that same topic, um, Secretary Nielsen said yesterday that one, of the, one part of the plan was for the Defense Department to build a wall on Defense Department land along the border. Can you tell us what that is, where that is, and also can you shed more light on the number of National Guard troops, <coughs> even a ballpark figure, are likely to be involved? Um, we are looking at places where DOD um, owns land to see where we can fortify um, along the border where that makes sense. So there are, there are, there's at least one installation um, that we're looking at, um, but we will continue to look at other opportunities where we can fortify, um, whether it's to in, in support of the Border Patrol. And, and then your water, second, water. along the Goldwater um, Reserve, that line for, um, for the Live, the water live fire, yes, thanks. Um, that is where we're sort of looking, because that is right on the border. It is right on the border? It is. Okay. And the second part about the number of National Guard members who are likely to be involved in this overall opera expanded operation? So that will all be determined by um, the requirements that are given to us, and that's why the cell is being stood up so that we can quickly um, respond to that, and it will be determined by ultimately the requirements that are asked. It's not even an estimate? So again, we have to. We, we're working. That's what the cell is about. We're going to coordinate. Um, we're, they will provide us with the requirements, and then from that, we'll determine how many and what's the mission, and how many we'll deploy. Jamie, you um, you mentioned some broad categories where you'd be providing support, aviation and um, vehicle. But can can you give us any specific examples of what, like for instance, in the realm of aviation, what might these troops be doing that would support the Border Patrol specifically? Can you give us an example? Sure. I, I would tell you right now, as uh, Secretary Nelson said yesterday in her statement, she's talking to the, to, the, to the governors of those states. We'll get a much better sense of what we're going to be able to do based on that conversation, which we expect to be concluded very quickly and we'll be able to move on it. But I, I don't have any specific details of what support we could provide beyond that, which Dana's already outlined, except to tell you that it'll, it will be guided by what the, what the requirements are that are identified by the governors in consultation with DHS. And just one quick follow-up mm -hmm. on the on the Goldwater Range. Isn't there already fencing around that? I mean, that's a, a bombing and range and training facility. Isn't it already fenced off uh, along the border? There is um, there is already some fencing there, but um, it has been identified as a p possibility to reinforce it. So that's what we're looking at. Um, I also wanted to just say, in terms of where we're going, it's important that the cell will be the single point of information, and we will provide you details as as we are meeting commitments to show what we're doing to just keep everyone abreast of of how that activity is going. Just one little thing. So sure. will you be suggesting activities to the governors or will you be uh, receiving their request for what they think they need to fill in the gaps? Well, first, um, the Department of Homeland Security is coordinating with the governors. Um, we, will, we will see requests that come from the Department of Homeland Security and we are in support of that. So that that's a single conduit in which we can support their efforts, and they will discuss with the governors what, what, how to move forward. General? David. 
Go ahead. Uh, do you envision uh, the troops that are involved in this being armed, uh, or at least some of them, on some of these missions? And what kind of ROEs will they be under? Um, and more broadly, um, will, they, will there be any sort of joint patrols with the, with the Border Patrol, or will it be you know, strictly kind of back, back from the border operation? So those are exactly the questions that we're answering now. I don't have I don't have answers for you on any of those. Those are all good questions. We will answer each of those questions in great detail as we deploy. It'll be depending on the situation. It'll be dependent, possibly unique from state to state. I don't want to prejudge that. Those are good questions. We just don't have those answers now. But those are the questions we're working to. Those are the questions we're working to resolve right now. Even even the the whether they'll be armed. And I mean, you don't have a general sense of whether soldiers will be allowed to defend themselves. In well, our bias right? is always that soldiers are able to defend themselves and they have the right of self-defense. However, we're going to be guided by the dialogue that's going on now between DHS and the and the governors, and then we'll work that here internally. Jennifer. In the past, presidents have pulled from O&M accounts, operations and maintenance accounts, to uh, provide these National Guard to the border. In fact, when President Bush sent uh, 6,000 troops down there, it cost $415 million, and that came from uh, Air Force and Navy. Can Do you know where the money is coming from, and can you assure us that it will not be coming from operations and maintenance? Um, the border the security support center is going to figure out all of those things. And so we still need to see the requirements. We need to see what's already happening and how do we enhance that. So we will have more details about cost, but we literally have just stood this up um, and that will provide some more details. Congressman Thornberry was very concerned that given uh, the rising number of crashes, um, uh, military aircraft crashes, that with the new money that's been provided to the Pentagon that uh, it might get stripped and he said don't rob that account in order to secure the border. Can you assure him that that money won't be taken from O&M? Our, our goal is to, one, border security is national security and we are leaning forward to support the president and his intent and his goal. Um, but readiness remains our top priority. The secretary um, believes that this needs to be um, the most lethal force in the world. Um, and much of his testimony on the Hill, so yes, I can assure you that our resources will still be dedicated to ensuring that our warfighters get what they need when they need it. Barbara. So just to make sure I understand, the money to pay for this, a couple of questions, is not coming, not coming out of operations and maintenance, but the National Guard will be paid by federal money. I want, I want to be clear. That is what the support cell is going to determine. Remember, we have several, remember, we have existing activities that are going on. So we have to look at what's already going on. That's a part of, of what we've done for years, as well as what enhanced or what other requirements there'll be. And then we'll determine how those are funded. Sorry, 